So when it comes to Fortnite, I personally think there's three things you need to perfect or at least get extremely great at in order to be an outstanding player. And those three things, the three golden rules are building, IQ, as well as aim and accuracy. You literally cannot have one without the other, otherwise you'll likely be losing all of the fights you get into and you will probably not be winning any of your game. Building and editing is something that can be learned through experience and obviously game time. Eventually, after about a week or so of playing, you'll probably start to be able to be a decent builder and then obviously as months go by, you will improve and increase even more so. IQ is something that is taught through experience as well and putting yourselves in various scenarios. You'll kind of begin to have more comfort throughout your games. However, aim and accuracy, in my opinion, is one of the things that kind of needs to be learned or taught rather. Granted, through experience, you can of course improve your aim and accuracy, but in order to drastically make a difference and a huge change, there's a lot of aspects that go into it. So that's why I find these videos to be extremely important and likely the same reason you've actually came to this video to learn how to aim and improve and land more shots. So I'm simply going to be sharing with you guys pretty much all of the things that I've used, all of the techniques, all of the practices that have really, really helped me improve my aim and accuracy at least like 10 times of what it used to be. So hopefully after you guys watch this video and you of course apply everything that I'm telling you, you'll be able to land pretty much majority of the shots that you take. So starting on honestly one of the things that I consider to be the most important part of having good aim and accuracy is your settings. If you take a player like Face Way or Sculpt, you know some of the best controller players and you mess up their settings, they will likely become awful players simply because settings matter that much, especially when it comes to aiming. So to swiftly go over the settings that I honestly think are perfect, in fact a lot of you guys consider them to be aimbot settings are as follows. The advanced look sensitivity settings, this will kind of affect when you're not aim down sights with an item so basically when you're hip firing with like a pump or attack this is what this will affect our look horizontal speed as well as look vertical speed are both going to be set to a 61 percent our turning horizontal boost as well as turning vertical boost are going to be matched at an 18 percent with a turning boost ramp time of 0.25 seconds following up is going to be the aim down sight sensitivity otherwise known as ads sensitivity obviously as the name suggests this will kind of affect when you're aim down sights with an item basically hold and left trigger or L2. The ADS look horizontal and vertical speeds are both going to be set to a 6%. The ADS turning horizontal boost as well as vertical boost are going to be set to a 10% with a ADS turning boost ramp time of 0 0.10 seconds. And then at the bottom below this is going to be the advanced sensitivity settings with a look dampening time of 0 0.05 seconds and using the look input curve linear. Now a lot of people strongly dislike linear because of the very raw stick input, which I completely understand and I'm honestly quite on your side. The reason we're able to actually use linear and still have that general feeling of control, such as when we use exponential, is because of the turning horizontal and turning vertical boost that I just shared with you guys. So do not worry once you switch over to linear and use these settings, it won't feel astronomically uncontrollable like majority of linear settings are. And then for the very, very final part of the sensitivity settings is going to be the dead zones, which are super critical. The move stick dead zone doesn't really matter at all, but the look stick dead zone is the main part and this should be set to a 10%. Basically lowering our look stick dead zone to a 10% allows us to have those snappy movements, being able to land flick shots and turn on people in a very timely manner. So these again are all of the quote unquote aimbot settings. So basically those are the aimbot settings and through trial and error that is how these settings came about. In fact, these exact sensitivity settings are matched perfectly with the speed of opponents in your game. So let's say an opponent is running in front of you full sprint, basically these settings I just shared with you guys match up with that speed perfectly, allowing us to have better aim and accuracy than pretty much everyone else in Fortnite. So that's the first part of the video, again, the settings, which I honestly will consider to be some of the most important and critical aspects of increasing your aim in Fortnite. So next up is going to be something that I also find to be a very important aspect, and this is the area or level rather that you hold your crosshairs. Typically when players are moving around, they rest their crosshairs kind of looking downwards. In fact, I'd still to this day kind of subconsciously do that. The issue with this is when we do get into a build battle or, you know, exchanging shots with opponents, our crosshair will naturally be lower than what it should be. Then the problem that arises from this is that when you're taking shots at opponents, they're likely going to be hitting their body, legs, and feet, if that. And this obviously will only allow us to land lower damage shots 
opposed to if we were to raise our crosshairs naturally, we would be landing headshots more times than not, allowing us of course to land 72 damage shots, even like 200 plus damage shots when using a pump or attack. Essentially, you just kind of want to be aware of where your crosshairs are. If you naturally rest them very low, which I'm sure you guys do, you want to kind of be self-aware to raise them when you're playing from now on. Eventually, after you know a couple of days, it will then become very comfortable to you guys and you won't even have to second guess it. So the area which we want to raise our crosshair or rest it rather is imagine a player is in front of you. Kind of picture where their upper body, neck, and head area would be located and this is where you want to keep your crosshairs at. This again is extremely important, especially for build battles. So let's say we're using a pump or attack. When you take a shot at an opponent, you guys are likely landing, you know, like 30 damage shots or 50 damage shots. And the reason being is because, again, your crosshairs are way too low. So once we do raise them and have them at head level on average, then we'll be able to land, you know, the 150 damage shots, the 200 damage shots, and literally eliminating opponents in one shot like they pretty much do to us every single time. So I'm constantly being asked, like, why am I landing 30 damage shots? while opponents are landing 150 damage to 200 damage every single time I get into an engagement. This is pretty much the sole reason and the root of that problem. So every time you play now, make sure you're aware to raise your crosshair to head level and once you get used to it, this will basically solve the problem for you. So we only have a couple of tips left that I've always used to help my aim in Fortnite. And this next tip is honestly something that is very, very critical and important before you hop into a public match. And this is warming up. Now, I don't mean going into a creative game and one of you wanting other people or build battling or something along those lines. There's actually creative maps that are specifically made to help you increase and warm up your aim and accuracy in specific. So basically, there will be a few codes in the description below and you can even see a map on screen right now. Now, and of course the code is located at the top. Basically with these courses and maps in creative mode, you can pretty much warm up before you hop into a public game. Now, a lot of you guys probably think this is pretty unnecessary, but if you watch any pro Fortnite player or even ask any pro Fortnite player, they will likely agree that warming up before hopping into a public match is very very important, especially for aiming. So just load into one of the creative maps that you guys either use from the description or the one on screen right now and practice with your aim. Of course you guys can see there's target practice for like ARs and mid range. There's also close range there's also close range practices with targets for of course your pumps and tags. And if you get lucky and you find and if you get lucky and hop into a good creative map, there'll even be long range practice for of course bolt actions and heavy snipers. So again, the best time to even utilize or hop into one of these maps is before you start playing for the day. If you try to do it in like the middle of the day, it honestly won't be as helpful, believe it or not, because at that point, you will likely already be warmed up. So every time you get onto Fortnite for the day, just load into one of these games and honestly just give it maybe five to 10 minutes at most. You don't have to waste like an hour on here. That honestly will kind of just be a buzzkill. So just hop in, load in for five to 10 minutes. Once you're warmed up and you're seeing that you're now hitting majority of your shots, when you go, and play your first solo duel or squad match, your aim is going to be drastically different than what it would have been if you weren't warmed up. So again, a lot of you guys probably think this is unnecessary and I honestly kind of understand, but once you make this part of your average routine when you play Fortnite, you will likely see the difference within probably, again, five to 10 minutes at most. So now the last part of today's video is actually gonna be specifically directed and talking about drum guns, tacks, and pumps in particular. And the main reason is because these are hip fire weapons. And a lot of times, like the most common dilemma in Fortnite is should you aim down sights with these weapons or hip fire with them? And the answer is quite simple. A lot of people say aim down sights with them and other people will say you should be hip firing with them. Well, honestly, it comes down to the scenario. So if you're in a position where you're applying as much pressure as possible, you're playing on the offense and you're pushing someone, you know, you're breaking through their walls and going at them and making edit plays, you should be hip firing, especially, especially when you're in a very, very close range fight. The reason being is because when you aim down sights, it actually does delay your shots. So the main part of Fortnite is to, of course, play offensive and pretty much always give yourself the advantage against an opponent. So let's say you aim down sights and they don't. Well, by the time you aim down your sights and that slow animation takes place, they will likely already be landing a shot on you, assuming they are hip firing. So again, if you're applying pressure in any very, very close range battle like build battling or you know, you're editing on an opponent, this is when hip firing comes into play. Granted, a lot of times this will hindrix your aim and the amount of shots that are landed, but due to the scenario, it honestly is worth the trade-off. 
Now, let's say you're in a build battle, but you're above an opponent. You know, there's some distance between you two, or even if you're playing slowly, like someone doesn't see you or you're behind somebody. These are scenarios that calls for aim down sights or ADSing. Basically, this allows us to, of course, land majority of our shots on the opponent. We are able to take our time and it won't put us at a disadvantage. Again, this is specifically if you're not applying too much pressure on an opponent, let's say they don't even recognize you're there or they're kind of like a bot per se, and also in the scenario where you aren't extremely close, like if you're, like if you're in a build battle and you're way above somebody and they're making their way towards you or at least attempting to, then again, we're not putting ourselves at a disadvantage whatsoever by aiming down our sights. So that's realistically the way to tell whether you should aim down sights or hip fire. This all kind of goes hand in hand with aiming and accuracy. So once you kind of get that through your head and recognize that mindset, you'll pretty much be able to win majority of your close range and medium range fights. So that's pretty much going to be all for today's video guys in regards to tips and tricks to improve your aim. And of course, if you apply everything that I've shared with you guys in this video, literally everything that I share with you guys, I can guarantee you that you will see a drastic improvement in your aim and accuracy. This is basically everything that I've done in my past experience of playing Fortnite that has allowed me to take my aim and accuracy from, you know, pretty much average to way above average, where I'm landing pretty much majority of the shots that I am taking. So that's pretty much going to be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, a like would be beyond appreciated down below. And of course, on the contrary, if you genuinely dislike today's video, then by all means, feel free to leave a dislike as well. And of of course, if you're new around here and would like to see more daily Fortnite content like this in the future, feel free to subscribe as well as turning on those post notifications. Nonetheless, my name is Gamer Gamertag, thank you all for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Adios.